Hey gang, we are back and this week we take a look at Azorius' number one control slash stacks commander. This is Grand Arbiter the Fourth. For only two colorless, one white, one blue, our mana gives us a two power, three toughness human advisor creature with three lines of rules. His first two lines provide us with a one colorless mana reduction to either white or blue spells that we cast. These can be spells, creatures, enchantments, planeswalkers, you name it, Grand Arbiter doesn't discriminate, he just reduces them and that's it. His final line of text acts as a reflection by adding an additional cost to all of our opponent's spells. Basically Grand Arbiter is a value engine, reducing the cost of most of our spells while at the same time simultaneously increasing the cost of all our opponent's spells. This allows Counterspell Wars to become very favored for us, making our Dissipates cost 2, which is similar to Counterspell, and making some of theirs cost 4. He's an interesting commander, and your chances are going to see a lot of people either groan or roll their eyes when you flip him, but I think he can be a lot of fun and can lead to some creative deck building on the opponent's sides. With all that being said, I've never actually piloted a Grand Arbiter deck, but I have played against it numerous times. But rather than try and guess how each of your decks are going to play out with the infinite variations of meta that exist in the world, I think it's probably better for me to just provide a suggestion of cards that I think are really, really good in Grand Arbiter. So since this is a control deck, we're going to mostly want to play control lishy lily kind of cards. Naturally, the first type of cards that come to mind, for most anyway, when they think of control, is probably counterspells. Counterspells in EDH are a peculiar beast. Most of the time, and I'm speaking from a purely multiplayer perspective, trading one card for our opponent's one card isn't always that great, especially when it means that two other people at your table now have potentially bigger and more threatening hands than you. In order for us to even consider a counterspell, it has to meet one of two criteria. It either has to be a hard counter, so nothing like mana leak or things that allow opponents to pay mana to get around it, or it has to provide us a benefit. Cryptic Command is probably the ultimate counterspell provided you can afford the triple blue. With four modes, you can almost guarantee that the two you'll pick will be largely impactful. Tapping troublesome creatures, bouncing permanents, or drawing a card coupled with a counterspell is always something we're going to be looking for. Rewind is another great hard counter, essentially being cast for three mana and netting us one mana in return. You can also consider running Mystic Confluence. I know I said before that mana leak type spells aren't great, but being able to have three options and doing them as whatever you need at the time is very very powerful for only four mana, assuming Grand Arbiter's on the field. You can also run counter spells in the form of bodies. Vencer Shaper Savant and Glenelendra Archmage have a wonderful benefit of being able to counter things and then provide us with a bit of damage. They're even better if you have, say, Deadeye Navigator on the field. So now that we've covered counterspells, let's look at Control's second favorite thing to do with their mana, drawing cards. Blue has access to a ton of ways of drawing cards, whether it's an instant, a planeswalker, a sorcery, an enchantment, you name it, Blue has got it. One of the most powerful and threatening draw engines in the game is Consecrated Sphinx. With a maximum capacity based on how many opponents we have and how much they draw per turn, Consecrated Sphinx can actually fill up our hand faster than we can use it. It also doesn't hurt that he has decent combat stats. You'll also want to run the typical blue enchantments like Rhystic Study and Mystic Remora. One of my favorite cards for the deck, and one that used to have a huge impact on the standard, is Sphinx's Revelation. I would also consider running Tamiyo the Moon Sage. Although her primary function is usually to lock down troublesome permanents, she does have the option to draw cards. Couple that with a great ultimate, she could almost be one of your win conditions. So we've talked about counter spells and we've talked about draw, but there are other ways to control our opponents than just countering and having more cards than they do. We've already seen a little bit of this in Grand Arbiter's ability, which causes opponents to have to spend one more mana to cast their spells. The best way to control opponents in multiplayer is to control their resources. One of the best things about Grand Arbiter is that he reduces our spells while at the same time increasing opponents. This allows us to run additional taxing cards. If we were to say drop a Thalia, it means that our opponents are now going to have to pay 2, whereas we're back to 0. Along the same lines of Thalia, Sphere of Resistance is a great way to increase that cost on opponents. Soul Ring is fantastic, but is it still as good if it costs 3 mana? These are the kind of questions we want to force our opponent to ask themselves. Inevitably, no matter how much taxing effects we have on the field, someone is going to cast something. What we want to make sure of is that we have access to spells that can prevent or kill those things. As such, we want to make sure we run things like Terminus, Day of Judgment, and Wrath of God to deal with creatures, and cards like Austere Command, Oblivion Ring, Grasp of Fate, and Council's Judgment to deal with anything else. So theoretically, with all this, you should be able to build a pretty decent deck that can control the board no matter what comes your way. How are you going to win? 
white and blue might not have the flashiest of finishers, but it does house many combos. You could always run the Palancron and Deadeye Navigator to generate infinite mana and cast whatever you want, like say Blue Sun Zenith. Or, if you're like me and look for different ways to win, you could use something like Frost Titan with a kicked right of replication. If that isn't enough, you can always run, and please bear with me as I butcher this, Azor's Elocutors. Basically, as long as we can protect him and not let anyone hit us for 5 turns, we win. If you're looking for flavorful wins, this is probably the most you can get out of Azorius colors. Well gang, those are my suggestions for Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. This video has been a little bit brief, but that's mostly because I don't tend to particularly play blue or control. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. Does he get there for you? What have your experiences piling at him or playing against him been? Do you have any suggestions for me? Just let me know. As always, thank you guys for watching and be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.